saying it's all over? Scully asked nervously. There's nothing anyone can do, not even you, Doctor? Rose questioned, fearing the worst. He nodded briefly and reached for a hand which was trembling slightly. I'm afraid, boys and girls, we've reached our swan song. He spoke the words quietly, almost as if he'd known deep down in his subconscious that this was going to be the outcome. Jack reacted sharply. We can't just give in. Doctor, surely you're not going to be defeated here after everything else we've faced in the past. The doctor reached for his hand and held it tight, letting the corners of his mouth turn up ever so slightly. All good things come to an end, Jack. The question is, what happens next? Mulder, I'm afraid, Scully admitted, grasping his hand firmly. He squeezed it softly and then reached out for Rose's hand. Don't be. Before anyone else could remark on what he'd said, a wave of intensely bright light suddenly filled the TARDIS. What the hell? Jack exclaimed. The TARDIS is acting like a conductor, the doctor said. It's channeling the energy into her. Hold on! Rose, it's all right, Mulder said gently. How can you be okay with this? Rose asked, confused. Because... But he didn't have time to finish his sentence, as he was suddenly struck with a wave of inner peace. It was almost like nothing mattered any more. I can't remember anything, Scully said. She thought she sounded scared, but then again, there was no reason to. This is so weird. Jack also felt strangely calm, yet couldn't understand why. I feel I ought to be freaking out, yet I have no idea why I should. Who are we? Rose asked, now in a tranquil state of mind. We are such stuff as dreams are made of. The doctor quoted his favourite Shakespearean phrase once more. There's nothing to fear, Mulder added. Recognising the feeling as if it had been the same one he'd experienced inside the void ship. Now he realised the incessant mental noise and self-identifying chatter would cease. He could finally let go. It took only a blink of an eye before the void engulfed the earth, swallowing it whole, devouring every atomic particle. It was at that moment that everyone on board the TARDIS began to lose a sense of who they were. Fear was eradicated. Euphoria flowed over them, and complete and utter peace was all that remained. Inside the northeast Georgetown Medical Center in Washington, D.C., a lone figure of a man lay in a bed, unmoving. His face was ashen and white. All that could be heard was a singular low tone from an ECG monitor in the room, revealing a green line across the screen. The patient had flatlined. Time of death, 11.15 p.m., Dr. Marcus Helmholtz stated clinically. A young woman sat beside the bed, tears flowing down her face. She'd rushed to the hospital as soon as she'd been informed her partner was in a coma after being in an accident involving a head-on collision on the freeway. For weeks she'd made frequent visits, praying the nightmare would end and he'd wake up, but fate had not been on her side this time. Now gripping the man's hand tightly, she leaned over to plant a kiss on his forehead, allowing her curtain of red locks to fall over his pale features. Then with trembling hands she started to clean out his bedside locker, placing the items in a cardboard box she'd brought with her. Scully sighed heavily as she packed away several books she'd been reading to him in the hope it would bring him back. A hardback book that had been written by his old university professor from Oxford called The Psychology of Time, a paperback on famous shipwrecks and a couple of science fiction novels based on two TV series from the UK. A faint smile crossed her face as she remembered him inviting her over to his apartment one evening to watch DVDs of these shows he'd ordered off the internet. Doctor Who, and what was the other one? Oh yes, Torchwood. In another dimension of space, another parallel, a different reality, Special Agent Fox William Mulder opened his eyes. As his senses returned, he thought he could hear a low humming tone which seemed to increase in volume. Then a noise like combustion engines permeated the air. Like a pulsating heartbeat of immense power, the sound added almost an ethereal quality to it. But it was unlike any spacecraft Mulder had heard before. Sitting bolt upright on his couch, he was just in time to witness a strange blue box materialise right in front of him. Here we go again, he thought. 